sorry, video four of 10. I'm trying to do 10 in 10 days. This one was a bit of a push. It's 10 past 10 on Sunday night. And I was like, fuck, maybe I'll just do two tomorrow, but we're gonna stick to it, 10 in 10 days. Um, this one, cause I've left it so late. Again, it's from my office. This one's a little bit on how to read plans. Um, it's pretty brief, but if you haven't done it before, it should have a bit in there, or at least enough that if you watch this two or three times, you'll be able to figure out how to, and maybe not mark out, but at least look at a house and figure out what walls to flick first, where to start, what the first thing to do would be. Um, so I'll do a screen record on my iPad and we'll pull up a set of plans. Um, so you'll see I've got, so you see I've got two lines down here already. Um, they'll be off your surveyor's marks. So they'll have pegs in the ground already with a nail on top. So you'll hook your string line onto each end um, and you'll do one for sort of your Y axis and then your X axis. Um, once you've got them, double check them for square and then also see how they fit on the slab. Um, so you wanna come up on this one you'd go, so usually it's a three, four, five. On this one you'd double it up and you'd go six, eight, ten. So you'd probably come eight meters up here. Um, you're probably gonna go six meters out here and then you want that to be 10 meters across. Um, double check them, play around with it. That part's gotta be right because it sets you up for everything. So this will set you up for your ground floor and your upper story. Um, You'll see up here, it's on the outside of the 240 mark. The 240 mark is your brickwork, your cavity and your frame. So I've drawn it out up here. So you've got 110 mil of brick, you've got 40 mil of cavity and you've got 90 mil of timber. Um, so for you, your surveyor always sets up to the outside of brickwork. So for you to get your timber frame, you're gonna measure 240 mil in off that line and then that's gonna give you the inside of your wall across here, and then same down here. Um, when you start flicking these out, you're gonna to wanna to try and work as much off these lines as you can, um, mostly for step-ins like here. So you, with this step-in, you're gonna to need to work out um, what the distance from like your outside of brickwork, so your string line to the inside of your wall frame. So you'll come up here and you see 1200s to the outside of brickwork. So you've got 1200 plus 240 will give you inside of frame. So that'll be 1420 from that point out to that point. Um, and then you can do that up the other end, get those two points, flick a line, and that's your parallel. I recommend Firstly, if you're gonna do it on paper plans, it is easier on paper plans than an iPad. Secondly, check before you start um, if the plans are scaled for A3 and you've got an A4, you can't scale anything, it's not gonna work, forget about it. You've gotta work out the numbers then. Um, yeah, other than that, it's just checking that you're all square. Um, your windows, if you go on and mark out your windows, this is probably an unimportant side note, but they might differ from the plans because you'll make it work to a brick. Um, so you don't get caught with like a 50 mil rip of brick up against a window, you'll always finish on a half or a whole brick. Um, for me, when I'm flicking out, I like to flick out my upper story on the ground as well. Um, makes it easier for putting all your point loads in. So to do that, you will work, these plans are pretty good. They've got offset lines. So this is the line, see how it says line of story above. That is where the upper floor goes. These ones have offset marks. So you got 960 in there, 1100 there. Super convenient and it saves you a lot of time. If you haven't got that, you got to work it off the stairwell. So that back stairwell wall there will go from upstairs sorry, from downstairs to upstairs, and then same with that wall there. So then when you go to your upstairs plan, you'll start working everything off that, off that wall there, and off that wall there, and that one there. Um, 
and then you just yeah, pretty much keep doing what you're doing, just measuring it out. Um, when we flick out, I always choose to start with the longest walls first and we'll work in a direction. So we'll work it going this way, we'll pick up all the walls going one direction and then we'll come back through and we'll pick up all the others in the other direction. Across there, across there and across there and it's just kind of easier because then you're only reading like one scale at a time rather than trying to flick out rooms and it's just easier. Um, is what I've found. Um, other than that, the only thing to look out for is your engineering. You've always got a beam under your external upper walls um, and beams always land on something. So you gotta make sure that, and this is the reason why I mark out the upper story onto the ground floor, because then when I'm marking my plates, I can put in, so these ones have triple studs under all the beams, that one's a steel column. Um, but I can put them in and know they're exactly right because I've checked the upper story for square. Um, so I can mark all that out on the ground and then when I come to doing beams, it's just throwing it straight up. Um, that's kind of about it. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of practice. You kind of just get used to reading plans. Um, they look intimidating at the start, but once you actually start to slow down and work your way through it and figure out what information it is on the plans that you actually need. It's pretty good. Um, only exception to what I've said is if you don't have the surveyor's pins already marked out, if the concreters have knocked them out with an excavator or something like that, you might just have to work 90 mil in off the slab. Um, so you'll just measure in off the side of the rebate and then you've obviously just got to check it for square on your slab. But we prefer to work to the surveyor's marks when they're available. Um, I think that's really about it. It's just take your time, read all the details you can, learn the numbers. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, there's not that much to it. Um, but yeah, if you can, I get asked a lot to do like an on-site flicking out a slab. Um, this is a probably good, pretty good precursor to it if you're struggling with this being on site with a chalk line is not going to help you at all. Um, if anything, it'd make it worse. So yeah, if you get the chance, grab a set of house plans and sort of figure out what it is that I'm talking about or even screenshot this and have a look at it. Um, this is kind of how I learnt. Just get your two axis, square it, and then work everything off that. That's all it is. Um, if you if it's a big building, then I'd start to check rooms. If you're starting, obviously this point's going to be your most square. By the time you get up here, you might have drifted a little bit. Um, so then I'd be doing a three, four, five in there just to check that as well um, and make sure you're still good on the other side of the building. Um, going out of squares a bitch, especially if it's got another story on it because um, most of our buildings are trusses you really notice if it's not right because your trusses will have overhangs everywhere. Um, you'll start, like your bird's mouth will line up and then as you work your way down the wall, you'll drift out however out of square you are. So it's really something you want to avoid if you can. And while you're just flicking lines on the ground and crossing stuff out, it's pretty easy to do. So yeah, that'll do for that one.